Uh, who would like to kick it off? Okay, I'll volunteer. <laughs> um, at uh, at six percent, uh, I have a concierge service that includes staging up to two thousand uh, dollars. The concierge service also includes a home inspection. Uh, it also includes the uh, staging um, design not just actual staging but the actual staging design and uh, then uh, that is uh, essentially oh um, <clears throat> a one-year home a one-year home warranty uh, that's what I, I provide at um, of course you know the the color copies I always use color copies uh, inside and out our concierge also will get a um, home book, um, naturally directional arrows, which goes on on both of them. Uh, we're going to do a, a three set mail out. Uh, we mail out a just listed, uh, just pinned, just sold. Uh, we'll door knock the neighborhood. We'll have a dual open house. Uh, of course, a lockbox, 24-7 uh, monitoring of that lockbox. We use the highest definition uh, HD um, photography with um, guaranteed blue sky and green lawn through Virtuance, which also includes a, uh, a virtual tour. Uh, we'll also include a Matterport 3D and um, a dollhouse view and um, floor plan with the concierge service. Okay, that's very helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It so, took a while for it to come back to me, but uh, that that in in a nutshell is what somebody will get for six percent. So one other thing that is a question: mm -hmm. in the old days, a lot of times we didn't advise sellers to have a home inspection because if they don't know something, they don't have to disclose it. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that now? I see more and more people are are having home inspections ahead of time. I uh, my opinion is well, I let the seller know one. I like to know um, the product I'm selling. Second um, is if there's something wrong with your house, it's better to identify it now than versus having to negotiate a higher cost later for it. Uh, and it's going to come up regardless uh, if you have a home inspection or not. Um, you know, it's just, it, it really depends upon the scenario and the house, you know, if it's a fixer, probably not. Um, I don't do too many, I don't list, uh, too many fixers. <clears throat> and so I, I prefer to have a home inspection, uh, up front. So we know what it is that we're doing. And this is generally two to two to two to three weeks out. Um, <clears throat> before it, it's really, a, it's really a, it's situational and circumstantial, but I always like to do it because then I can provide that, uh, to the buyer and they know exactly what they're getting. And if they do end up having a, their own home inspection, I can compare our apple to their apple. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. One thing I would say that especially oh, house clean, I forgot, I forgot. <laughs> with my uh, uh, with my uh, concierge service, I provide uh, two hundred and fifty dollars of uh, house cleaning. Okay, thank you. So, without your, if you don't want my asking, so without your concierge service, what's your standard from there? Five. Okay. Well, you're you're putting a lot of bang for the buck for that one percent. Well, you know, it's it's you know. When you're talking about, you know, a five hundred thousand dollar a house, like that, those additional that additional five thousand dollars, I'm actually making approximately um, about fifteen hundred bucks. So I try to keep my costs down on on the concierge service to about a total of thirty five hundred dollars. 
So if you do five, you do two and a half, two and a half. And then if you do six, do you do three, three? No, I do two and a half and three and a half. Ah. And sometimes I'll end up profiting even more. That's where the number is. Okay. Yep. Yep. That's, you know, so I have a little bit of a war chest uh, for my listings. You know, no more than $4,000 is really what, what I'm what I'm thinking about. Yeah. To uh, on Marie's uh, question on the home inspection, I'm finding it very helpful. I got a client that uh, Werner and I are working with uh, that we've been uh, looking at homes in Muckleteal, Everett, now Lake Stevens. And it's really helpful in this uh, multiple offers situation. Every one of them has been multiple offer. Uh, it's been very helpful to have that inspection report uh, to review versus having to either do a pre-inspect or uh, put an inspection request in our uh, offers. Excellent, excellent point. That's a very valid point uh, to avoid having those pre-home inspectors and have inspectors crawling over each other on a Monday yep. because that's when you want to have your pre-home inspections completed. Celine, what's your, uh, what's your opinion and your idea about having the homes that you list inspected prior to going live. And also, there's a second part to that question. Do you upload the copy of the full report or the summary report? I guess there's a three-part question. And third, if you don't upload it, um, when do you provide it to interested parties? Or you just, you just say, call listing broker, or what, what's your process with that, Celine? So I always suggest my listing or, you know, I always suggest my sellers get an inspection report. Sometimes okay. they don't want to. Um, and then if they don't agree to pay for it, then I'll say, you know what, I'll go ahead and take care of it then. Okay. And then I will have it. Uh, I will actually upload it. I don't do the thing where it's like, reach out to me after you've seen it. I just upload it and I upload okay. the entire thing. If I okay, can. the full the full report. Okay, yeah. okay. Now, um, a couple of things to to keep in mind: uh, if you are using the inspection report with your listings, it sounds like the majority of us are. It's not a requirement. Um, at that point in time, if you are doing so, I would refrain from completing the property disclosure statement until that um, inspection report is complete. Otherwise, you're having to go back and, and review and, and redo it because if something comes up and you have constructive knowledge of that uh, a material fact of the property and it's not disclosed, um, it could come come back and cost you thousands of dollars later. So just a, a technical. How about you? Um, Can uh, I have Marilee? something, Todd? Yes, please. I, I also, if... Um... If there are things on the inspection that the seller has decided to fix or repair or replace, mm. then I have another sheet that shows all the things that the seller has taken care of. Add it to the supplements when you um, upload uh, supplements to Correct. the listing. Yeah. yeah. Items, items corrected, corrected items per listing or uh, per um, inspection report. Excellent point. Glad you brought that up. Marilee, is there um, any addition? Uh, you do a lot of listings. Uh, what uh, What are your thoughts about this? Do you do them on all your listings, or how do you determine which listings you would and which listings you wouldn't? Marilee must be occupied. I'm not sure Marilee's here. I think it's Megan. It's Megan. Megan. Okay, Megan's joining. Okay. Oh, yeah, that is Megan. Okay. Oh, hello, Megan. She's watching her kids today. Uh, and so let me let me shoot the question uh, to you, Marie, uh, since this is your topic. How would you determine what listings that you would provide the um, inspection report and which ones you wouldn't and why? So, you know, I've done it both ways, honestly, mm -hmm. and usually it's a discussion with the seller explaining that if they find something, we either have to disclose it or repair it. And um, so it sort of depends on the age of the house, too. I mean, mm -hmm. once again, if it's a fixer and we know it's a fixer, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, 
it is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. But if it's in pretty good, if it's a nice home, um, mm -hmm. a lot of times an inspection report um, is really good because like I tell most sellers, it's usually the crawl space in the attic that something comes up and that they places they don't ever look. And so that gets us, um, you know, a report. And then I would, if I have an inspection report, I generally just upload it for everyone to review because if we've got nothing to hide, I don't see a big yeah. issue with having it right out there. That's right. That's good. A couple other things that you're going to, um, uh, when you're listing property, is the um, forced air, the furnaces. Um, if it hasn't been serviced within 12 months, cleaned and serviced, then it's going to get called on every home inspection. So it's one of those things that uh, you may want to just, you know, get in front of that ball and inform your sellers to do that. Sometimes I will save that as a card. I mean, they're like $179 mm -hmm. to do a furnace inspection and servicing, maybe two and a quarter, but nothing more than that. Pilchuck Heating, um, they're much yeah. less. Yeah, and uh, exactly. Um, air ductors, and there, there's, a, there's a host of them. Find somebody you like, and uh, that is sometimes, that is sometimes one of those add-ons, you, know, um, you know, I can add on or take off you know, it's $179 and it's a nice little something or something. Um, another thing to, to try to get in front of is if they have a septic tank and try to get that darn thing done um, and inspect it particularly for the purpose of a sale. It's a much different ball game now uh, than it, what it used to be when you all you needed to do is call Ace Acme and have him come out and pump and inspect. Now it needs to be pumped, inspected, and recorded. Well, in King County, it's even worse. So if you work, ah! King, it's 10 times worse. <laughs> so even if, okay, even if it's been pumped and inspected within the last 12 months, if it's not recorded, okay, it's going to need to happen. And so have that, have them bring the people back out and say, hey, I need you to, re, you know, take another look at this. So that is, that's not something I pay for. Um, that that can be you know six seven hundred dollars. Um, <clears throat> wow! But something to keep in mind uh, when you're listing properties to knock that one out of the out of the park. Another one is a well, you mm -hmm. know, uh, a well. Uh, typically, uh, that is something that the uh, buyers are uh, will conduct. Uh, that's a buyer side type of scenario. However, uh, if you can have that pump uh, inspected and the water test completed uh, and, and attach that, it's just going to make uh, the buyer, it makes an easier pathway for the buyer to get to a yes and makes your property more marketable. And ultimately those two items bring a higher dollar amount at the closing table for your seller. Well, and Nancy was saying that now lenders are requiring a well test also. And, um, she even said that a lot of times they won't let us just go get the water and turn it in anymore like we used to be able to do. You actually have to have a contractor do it. Okay. Wow. Okay. This is a great discussion about listing prep. Okay. Prepping listings. Uh, another one is when you're listing a condo, you know, do you order the resale certificate ahead of time or do you wait for the sale? I order it. Okay. And the sellers pay for it. You bet. Because those so things are pay for it. something I discovered when listing a condo back last year. Um, the, a lot of resale certificates are only good for thirty days, so you want to be cautious with that because it it can, you know, if you have any extensions or anything, it, it can cross that line. Good, excellent point. Excellent point. Now, naturally, in terms of a listing prep, if you are also listing a property that is located within a, an HOA, a residential or otherwise, you want to get a copy of all of those HOA docs, the CCNRs, in other words, and upload those as, an, as, an, as, a, as a supplement as well. If you are ordering a sign, Make sure to go out there and stake the sign where you want it. Contact and take a photograph of where that stake is and send it to your signpost company. 
they'll do a 411 call before you dig. Make sure that uh, that sign is installed on the day of the listing. Who uses um, who uses flyers on the outside of the property? I Does do. anyone flyer? Okay, flyer box, mm -hmm. flyer box. Okay. Uh, what type of information do you put on the flyer for the mm. outside? Do you, is there a difference between the outside flyer and the inside flyer? Good question. I know. <laughs> I'm I'm learning on this one. So Tell me. you put less information on the outside flyer to get them to call or show up. Okay. What's what what? Tell me more about that. You're generating interest. You you make them want to know more. So what information do you not withhold? Or what information do you uh, not disclose? That's a good question. The price? Price? And? Well, some agents don't put flyers out at all, so they get sign calls. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. I wouldn't include the address or the MLS number. Okay. That, uh, they don't go home on the internet looking on Zillow or wherever, and okay. unless they took good notes. Excellent. Most of the time, um, it's going to be a neighbor who's going to be picking up those flyers. Um, it's going to be somebody who is shopping for somebody else. Uh, the typical buyer who has collected the information, it'll be they've collected it through their Zillow reminder or their Redfin reminder or their agent reminder, you know, the search criteria where they get automatic updates. <clears throat> and they're tracking it down. They have their little map and they drive up to the property and they have all the information generally in front of them. And they can pull it up uh, on their Google and look it up through those whatever site that brought them there. Home Snap, Redfin, Zillow, whatever whatever tool that got them there. It's just a couple frames away and they have full access to all the details. Um, and everyone everyone's correct. I like to uh, put a QR code and send them to my website. Oh. Um, the, um, the idea of that is I want to get them to the website to take a tour. It'll say a QR code, see a virtual tour, see QR code. And so the QR code takes them to the uh, virtual tour that I have that was set up through uh, Virtuance, which is why I like Virtuance because it has a really great virtual tour to it. I know you can get pictures done for a buck 25 or 150 bucks but they don't generally always come with a really, really nice tour uh, <clears throat> attached to it. So um, I like to use a QR code and you're absolutely right. I don't put the price and I don't put in too many pictures of the interior of the property. And I also don't put in the square footage. When people pick up the flyer from the outside, they're looking for reasons why the house won't work for them. They're not looking for the reasons it does work for them. They're looking for the reasons it doesn't work for them. Price is too high. Oh, it's too small. The kitchen doesn't look, the kitchen isn't big enough. It doesn't have an open floor plan. That bathroom looks too small. It, that backyard is not as big as I want. You know, they're, they're looking for reasons why it won't work for them. And so I'll just give them enough. It's the scratch and sniff. <laughs> They're going to scratch and be curious about what that smells like. And so they have to take the next step to get the sniff and either give me a call, go online, and then make the next makes the next thing. Now, here's the thing about having outdoor flyers. Who manages the box? There needs to be some flyer management that goes on. So if I have an owner-occupied property, I provide say, look, only put 10 flyers out at a time, okay, and I want you to manage it. Now, actually, if it's a vacant and you're using outside flyers, 
that's something that you're going to have to manage yourself and do some pop buys occasionally to manage and make sure that box is full because if you are using an outside uh, flyer box and it's empty that's a poor representation of your service well the other thing is too if the house is vacant it's nice to stop by and make sure the agents have locked the doors and <laughs> nobody's yes. done anything wacky while they were yes there. yes yes on your virtuance what do you get uh and wh what does it cost so they do your photos yeah they do and, and they're just an incredible incredible job um we get a discount because they're a, per, uh, a preferred vendor and uh, we order it and they're out there in two or three days and then they they turn it around generally within two days and you know just i'm very 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 excited about what it is they do for it and they send out a reminder to the customer about how to prepare your home for the photography before they arrive and then do they provide you uh the matterport and the and the virtual yes. tour yes the floor plan they they can do also they can also do aerial photography drone photography as well nice it's a little bit of an add-on but uh, on the on the upper homes when you know the floor plan it's you know what when when i'm marketing a piece of property i'm not just intending on selling the property to the audience that is on the internet i want the neighbors to see what a, a freaking awesome job i'm doing because you know those you know almost 100 percent of the time those neighbors are checking out that marketing mm -hmm. and if you don't if you're not up there with the big dogs okay and if you can do better than the big dogs bark a little louder look a little bigger and smell a little better okay all right you're gonna have a better chance of winning that neighborhood business because you have an audience you may not even know that's checking you out and so that's what I'm really, you know, when, when I talk about listing property, sure, I do all of those things, but I know there's another audience out there watching. And so at the open house, when they come by, I'm, you know, I'm pretty particular about how the open houses are held, the music that I've got going on in there, the welcome and the greeting and the atmosphere, um, because everything that we do around your listing is a sale. It's marketing. The directional arrows everything great topic Marie man I'm happy you brought that up yeah well I just wondered you know I hear different agents do different things so it's just interesting to know what other people are doing mm-hmm mm-hmm if somebody wants a four and a half percent or a, or a four and a half from four and three quarters, you get um, you get photographs uh, from my phone and a listing input. <laughs> and maybe a sign. I'm just joking. You're going to get another agent. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't do it. Are there, are there some other thoughts? Um, uh, regarding um, stuff that goes around your listings, things that you can do? So uh, kind of like I went uh, poked on the idea of a, of a vacant, um, what's your take on, on staging? Uh, are you a 50-50? You, you gotta... I'm 100% staging. Are you? Okay. Yeah, Rochelle and I fight about, we don't fight about it. We, yeah, argue. Yeah. Uh, we, we argue about it all the time. She's not for it, and you're a hundred percenter. Absolutely, absolutely, hundred percent of the time. Now, uh, there's there's different types of there's enhanced staging, where we can use part of the owner's uh, furniture. Yeah. Uh, there's a full home stage, every home, I mean every room done, and then there's a parcel stage, just the hot points of the property, kitchen, living room bathrooms master bedroom mm. okay uh when i'm doing a, a a more of an upper end i'll i don't control the stage and i'll let the stages do their thing but i'll say i want a theme okay i want this to be a um, a rec room party scenario 
uh, and they'll set up a, a, a coffee table with a poker with some poker chips on it and and I'll say I want this to be a boys room I want this to be a girls room okay okay um, and, and so I'll sort of give a, a general theme of how I what I'm thinking about and let them do their job I just stay out of their way yeah I don't even I don't I don't attend the staging or anything like that so for like a standard 2,000 square foot home and you're doing a partial like the main points uh, main focal points. What's kind of a budget? What's kind of a cost on that? Fifteen hundred to two thousand. And so that stuff stays there until it's it's under contract or until it's sold. Until the until the home inspection is satisfied. Once the home inspection is satisfied, stuff comes out. Okay. So you don't leave it there for the appraiser. No. Do you get charged as just a one-time deal, or do they charge you daily? Well, they have a, um, sometimes it depends upon the stager. Sometimes uh, stagers will have to rent furniture and, and sometimes they have some of their own. And if it stays in there a little bit longer than normal um, because the seller wants a really high price uh, anytime, and that's not normally the case anymore, but when it was, uh, then if it's still on the market and there's an additional month's worth of rent, the seller pays for that. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've never done staging. I'm, I'm, I'm with Rochelle. I argue again, trying to keep costs down. And, yeah. But I, I can also understand that you can make a good argument for it as well. Well, the, the National Association of Realtors, if you want to believe their studies, right. okay, um, uh, have reported, you know, I don't know how they get the statistics. So, I mean, don't, I'm not calling it the Holy Grail or anything it's like yeah. that, but they say homes uh, sell uh, 97 percent faster and three percent more than non-staged homes so and i've done light staging myself you know i yeah. have chairs and a table and pillows and you know beds the little air beds and all that kind of stuff too so mm -hmm. yeah i've done that in the past too i'm just not really good at design uh, sometimes and, and and how things look um and so I know other people are much better than that. I know a lot of real estate brokers that do their own staging too. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, it's not my skill set. Mine either. <laughs> yeah. Now, what do you think about virtual staging, just out of curiosity? Brownie box. Um, my, my opinion is different from anybody else's opinion. I, I think it's, I think it's as fake as somebody putting their high school glamour shot on their business card. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mike, take it off. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, if I look this good in high school, man, I don't know. <laughs> Have you seen Todd's pictures in his business cards? He still uses his old photos. <laughs> 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 Jose, okay, buddy. <laughs> Jose, Jose can... looks 21, you know. Yeah, I was going to say, Jose can still use his and get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, I got to get back into the Salvation Army. Um, got another minute or two. Is there, is there anything else that we'd like to bat around? I, I Doug, mean... let me ask you. I, I didn't get a chance. I want to hear from Doug and, and Werner real quickly. Um, what is it that you could just a couple of things real quickly that you walked away with that you found valuable from this discussion? Um, basically just the, the list that's required to do a okay. listing. Um, okay. You know, all of those things that you mentioned, uh, you know, a lot of those things, I guess I just haven't thought about because I haven't got a, I haven't got a listing yet. So, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, it prepares me a little bit better to know that I'm going to need to do the photos and the inspection report and the, um, yeah. you know, house cleaning and the flyer box. And, um, uh, so yeah, these are things that I hadn't really thought of yet that I'd certainly be asking you, you know, if I got somebody to the table. Okay. okay. Uh, Thank you. Werner, how about you? What are, what are a couple of things that you, um, uh, can walk away from this session and say, okay, that, that was good. Good morning. Uh, basically, everything because uh, like uh, Doug, I don't have a listing yet. Um, and I created a list uh, what I what I take out of this, like almost everything. 
like uh, from flyers, staging, uh, uh, video surrounding was very helpful. Thank you. So for me, yeah. I take everything out of here. <laughs> everything okay. is new. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Mike, how about yourself? You know, the idea of staging every house is, is, is something I've been kind of meaning to actually talk to Jim about, um, you know, whether or not it should happen when you get a listing. And so this, this was very interesting to see people's point of view on that. You know, yeah, you're trying to sell a house, freaking stage it. Um, I get that. And so, because it, it just really helps to enhance and show off the inside of a house. So, uh, yeah. yeah, that was that was pretty big this morning for me. Well, how about you, Celine? Uh, did you did you pick up anything? Uh, thank you for your input as well. Um, the flyer box. I never do a flyer box. I usually just do the sign with. Yep. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to start using that. I usually just do flyers inside the home, and I usually only use them for open houses. So yeah, flyers great. are great neighborhood neighborhood marketing. Well, and so just so everybody doesn't get too stressed, I mean, I've, I spent a lot of years, you know, using my clients' furniture, or if you're blessed, they have a beautiful home and it's not a big deal. Yeah. Um, and I expect them to clean their own house usually. I mean, unless it's something really bad, you know, it's like, hey, your house needs to be cleaned. You know, I've always paid for really good photographs and of course all the standard stuff, but you know, you don't have to kill yourself on staging sometimes either, which can get very expensive. It can. You're right. You're right. Uh, along Jose, with the flyer box. I did get a, a six hundred thousand dollar listing off of a neighbor picking a flyer out of my flyer box and holding that flyer for yeah. a year and calling me after the fact and had us come out and list their house. So yeah, love the marketing. Yeah, got to have the flyer box. Flyer box. Love, love that marketing. Jose, how about yourself? You want to uh, take us out? Um. No, I think most of the things we covered is, you know, kind of seeing different opinions as far as with the, the fly box. You know, I I personally have gotten a lot of sign calls when I've had listings. Um, they just see the number and would like to know more info. And then I can get the information and just jot it down and put in my CRM saying, hey, this person called me, maybe just follow up in the, in the week, see how motivated they were and see if they wanted to check it out. But at least I have them in my CRM. One thing, uh, uh, there's two more things about flyers <clears throat> on the outside flyers. One is there is uh, called a permanent flyer where you put the flyer in a protective uh, case and you attach it to the post. And that flyer never leaves. Okay. So they can come up there and they can scan with the QR code and they can read the information and then call. It gives them a little bit more information about the house, but not everything. And it's more than a number on the sign. Okay. So you have the permanent flyer. They can't take anything with them. It forces that, uh, it forces that piece, it forces a different action versus the action of taking a flyer and having it end up on the floorboards. Second is when you're having open houses, Remove all the flyers from the outside flyer box and put one in there that says, please come inside to pick up your flyer. So, all right. Thanks, I'll see guys. you all later. Team meeting today at 1230 if you can make it. Take care, bud. Guys. See you guys.